if you've got a hundred dollars and you want to build a house, you need to watch this morning's Carolina People. Coming up next. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at Grassy, Granite, and Marble on the frontage road off Highway 544 between the Intercoastal Waterway and South Carolina 31. We're focused on Habitat for Humanity of Horry County. And we're visiting with its executive director, Gail Olive. Good morning, Gail. Good morning. Nice Thank to you have so you. much for coming you. in early on a Tuesday morning. Thank you. Great to get you I'm in. I'm always awake early. So it's been a number of years since we were last together. I think at the Herald Studios there on the former Air Force mm -hmm. Base there with Fox TV, and uh, it's great to get you back. Well, thank it, you for inviting us. A lot happening with uh, Habitat for Humanity of Horry County. We are busy. And Habitat uh, for Humanity International. I'm sure it's uh, tentacles all over, but a lot going on. Continuing to build houses across the world, and we do a tithe to Habitat International, which is used to build houses in, uh, internationally. So mm -hmm. when we build a house here, we also build a house somewhere else through Habitat International. So it's a great opportunity for people. Absolutely. Have you visited other homes around the world that are even around the country? Yeah. Or you probably haven't yeah. had much time to leave uh, Horry County since taking on this position almost eight years ago. Actually, I haven't visited any Habitat homes in other countries. We do send our tithe to Ghana, South America. Mm. So sometime maybe we will try to get there. That would be a great uh, But story. we have visited lots of places in the United States. And it's fun to see how different habitats operate. They function under a separate board of directors. And so they are able to do certain things their way, and we do our things our way. And mm -hmm. But we all work under the same name, and we adhere to certain core tenets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You say the other habitat chapters or mm -hmm. other habitat locations around the country all operating with different boards. Mm -hmm. mm. How do you go about selecting, or how does the board select you? How does that work exactly, boards and communities? Is that... Uh, select me uh, as Finding a, the board members, excuse oh, me. Oh, the board members, right. okay. Um, well, we look for people that have a heart for Habitat. Right. And have an interest in the ministry that we do. Um, we don't often always get high-profile folks, mm -hmm. um, but because Habitat's been a grassroots organization for quite a few years, we're just starting to move into more of a professional board or policy making right. board. So it's been it's been a transition. So mm -hmm. as people are suggested in the community, as we see that we have certain needs for certain types of professions or mm -hmm. expertise, we talk to people who have those expertise and say, Are you interested in habitat? And if you're interested in habitat, how would you like to help us? And they need to be interested both in the service side as well as use the M word ministry, the ministry side. They need to understand that we are a ministry, that we're a Christian ministry. We don't ask our homeowners and we don't ask our board members to be Christians, nor do we ask them to go to a church, but we do hope that they have some kind of a commitment to the whole philosophy of Habitat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is very important. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. If a viewer needs to get off to work now or get family off to school, what's the best phone number to use and do you all have a website? Gail, if someone wants to learn, and of course you've got a resale store as well. We do. Our phone number is 843-916-8815. Okay. Our website is habitatmb.org. Okay. And you can actually uh, volunteer online by filling out our volunteer application. You can find um, other phone numbers and other areas of interest if you wanted to volunteer in certain areas. And do you all ever have po folks just pop by, pop by your location to talk about volunteering or do you encourage them to go online first? Yes, we always have people walking in and out. Oh yeah. Um, we have, of course, our store is located, our resale store is located in the same facility. Right. Which is five, uh, 1519 Executive Avenue in Myrtle Beach. We're just off 501 right. between Executive Avenue and Seaboard. Yeah. And so our store takes up most of the lower level of this building and it's a big warehouse oh yeah old warehouse building and so it's pretty uh, hard to miss if you get on executive it is, Avenue right off of, very close to Grissom Parkway exactly mm -hmm. and our our offices are upstairs so sometimes people walk in um, asking to volunteer sometimes it's easier if you have access to the website to to just fill out an application on, sure. online and submit that what are the times of the day for the re resale store 
The resale store is open six days a week, okay. Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and also on Saturday from 10 to 3. 10 to 3 on Saturday. Short okay. day on Saturday right now. We're looking at the possibility of extending hours. We know we miss some customers who want to come in in the early evening because they work all day and then maybe not, can't make it on Saturday. So we're kind of going to toy with those hours, but right now we're, we are open six days a week. That's great, Gail. Give me those times again. That's Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday from 10 to 5. 10 to 5. And then Saturday from 10 to 3. Okay, so 10 to 3 on Saturday. So today they need to wait a few hours before they'd come out, but the resale store is... Uh, it's open it, at 10. What, is, what would they find if they visited the resale store for the first time, other than it being a big, you said, a, a big space? I've been to a chamber after hours event there, which yes. is well attended. Very nice. A yeah. packed house and yeah. uh, a lot of folks nice. that had never been there. And it's always a surprise, I think, because it is a large space. We carry um, donations of furniture right. and some appliances, uh, lighting fixtures. Uh, we have construction materials, tile, right. tile, yes, carpet, grass, <laughs> and right, tile, and um, cabinets. Right now, we have an incredibly large number of kitchen cabinets that are brand new that are still in the boxes. Really? And unfortunately, we don't have enough of anything, maybe t for a whole kitchen. But if you're looking for something for your garage or you're looking for an odd cabinet or something for, for your home, you can get a good purchase there. Prices are good. Prices are good. Uh, we always have a sale on. People will look at the prices and say, that's high, and then we'll say, but it's 70% off or it's 50% oh, off, yeah, and then they yeah. go, okay. Then it looks a lot more attractive. But, yes, yes. So if someone's yeah. interested, again, 916-8815, just call and you can and we'll direct them to the direct store them number. straight to the mm -hmm. resale store. What, what prompted the founding of Habitat for Humanity? For viewers who may not be familiar with, is it Jimmy Carter or maybe we hear that name? Yeah. There's someone else who yeah. actually, uh, actually founded. Uh, actually, Jimmy Carter's our most famous volunteer. He really volunteer. didn't. Volunteer. Okay. Yeah, he really Forgive didn't me. start with <laughs> Habitat until about Shows after his am. presidency, yeah. after 1980, 1981. Uh -huh. And Millard Fuller was the there founder. Millard yes. and Linda Fuller were the yes. founders in yes. 1976. 76. Okay, so the so same year that uh, Carter fairly, went into office, right? Right. It's so a fairly. Um, they tell an interesting story, and I don't know how much time we have. But, oh, we've got time. But the uh, story is. Um, Millard Fuller went to Jimmy Carter after the presidency and said, are you interested in Habitat or are you very interested in Habitat? And Jimmy Carter says, well, I'm very interested in Habitat. And so uh, Jimmy Carter told him, you know, go and make up a list of, you know, some things that you think I might be able to help Habitat with. So Millard goes back and he makes up a list of about 15 things he thinks that Jimmy Carter can help with. Right. And he goes back to Jimmy Carter and he says, I have a list of 15 things that I think you can help Habitat with. And Jimmy Carter says, okay, and Millard's part of the story is, I should have had more than 15 things on here. <laughs> yeah, and of sure. course, Jimmy Carter's part of the story is, I've already, I already am doing more than 15 things, right, right. but he has committed to do Jimmy Carter work project every year. So every year, someplace in the United States or around the world, he and Rosalind actually head up a um, Jimmy Carter work project build. Wow. And usually they build more than... Um, they build a significant number of houses, maybe 100 houses at a time, mm. in a week. Now, in you a were, week. You were talking about this whole the concept build blitz, of yeah. the build splits. It has been founded in a very strong tradition in Habitat. I fought it for a long time, however, because I was afraid that it was just going to be way too difficult to get wow. everything in place. And, and when you're the only person working at Habitat, oh. early on, I was a little apprehensive to do that myself. Right. But in 2006, we did our first Blitz build in Conway, and we had um, four builders, and we built four houses. Actually, we built uh, four houses. Four houses in five days. Four houses in, in five, five days, days, and now in you're working on uh, 2008. And in 2008, we are going to be building out seven more houses in our Village of Dreams subdivision off of 501. Good. And we have seven ha seven lots. We've only been able to secure six builders, but um, those six build well actually five builders will build six houses five in five builders five days. We'll do six houses in, in five, five days. days. Wow, we got to write that down. Five builders will do six houses in five One days. One builder is actually going to do two. That's tremendous. Canceled. Share with viewers who the yeah. five uh, builders yeah. are, please. These, these builders have actually um, wonderful people. Right. A great commitment to oh, Habitat. Yeah. Uh, some of them, all of the ones, all of the builders that participated in two six, 2006 are back, mm -hmm. and they've recruited some others. So 
Chancel Builders, right. located in Conway, Mackenzie right. Jordan, mm -hmm. um, Derek Blanton Construction, mm -hmm. Derek Blanton, mm -hmm. uh, Berkeley White, Classic Home Building Classic. and Design, mm -hmm. Harry Dill, Hall Custom Homes, right. uh, Jarrett Breen, American Dream Homes. And tremendous. I'm still looking for one more builder if I can get it in the next couple of days. Because you don't want the, uh, the oh, to, to do the seventh home? To or do the so seventh that one home. wouldn't have to do I have two, two days. Yeah. I have yeah. until Thursday to come up with this person. So Okay, so if a viewer's so tuning in right now and they I know have, a builder who could possibly. I have one I've been talking to. but well, What would the builder's uh, requirements need to be? Exactly. Again, they'd want to call if they got to get off to work now, 916-8815 and ask for Gail Olive. or. Right. Anyone that else? That would be great. Okay, that just be you. Super. Good, good. Um, they basically commit to build the house and to um, ask their vendors and subcontractors to donate the materials so that, or raise some money. Say, for instance, if you weren't a vendor or a contractor, but you were a friend of right. uh, Berkeley White or Harry Dill or right. Jarrett Breen or someone, uh, you might say, well, I can't give you anything, but I can donate. Two hundred dollars or five hundred dollars yeah. or something that would yeah. help 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 offset. Help offset it, it sure. Yeah. But um, Habitat commits uh, to provide the slab and uh -huh. the property, and then the this builder. This is in the, the village of dreams. In the village yeah. of dreams, and we also have qualified families who are ready to go. Oh, I and bet. Ready to, they're excited about getting their home. And yeah. The fact that they're going to be able to see it built, and it is exciting to watch this happen. Right. And I have to tell you, I, I'm a convert. You know, here I came in convert with a, from from to, let's not do this to right. yes, let's do this and we can do this, it. And we, do do it. Yeah. and we were very well prepared. Staff worked really hard to get it uh, everything lined up. We look for people and businesses who are willing to donate food for mm -hmm. the meals because we provide lunches and dinners and breakfast for the for the builders for and the five for, days mm -hmm, for the five days. Mm. So it's a pretty large logistic. Problem. Gigantic undertaking. Is, you thought it, it was big enough just for the folks uh, Berkeley White and the others mm -hmm. who put up the uh, extreme makeover, the extreme um, makeover well. house, but five houses uh, pot or six houses in five mm -hmm. days, potentially seven houses if you can round up that last builder here right. in five days. What right. a giant undertaking! I just focus on one house and really make it a special, and they did an amazing job. Not to take anything away from that, but just to focus on six, maybe seven houses over five days. I can't fathom it. And it will probably cost us less than, than the one house that That's was right. built. Yeah. So, but we do, we do very simple, decent, affordable housing. Right. And um, Renee Wilson, who was actually the recipient of the Extreme Makeover House, had oh, applied yeah. for a Habitat House and had been accepted. But when this opportunity came by, of course, she was, um, right. she was very blessed to be able to have that she opportunity. Was, very definitely. I think I saw so we were that grateful to there's that. 600 folks uh, that have been that have applied and been accepted. Is that correct? Seventy five that actually we've had nine hundred uh, families that have expressed an interest in habitat homes. Okay. And we're going through those listing now trying to pre qualify to find out if they make enough income. One of the important things that people don't understand is that we don't give the houses away. Therefore families have to have an income. They need to be able to repay a no interest mortgage. Mm. So when you're talking about that concept we don't want to set people up for failure. Right. We want them to have sufficient revenue uh, income coming in, as well as the fact that they're going to pay their bills and that they're going to be successful. Mm -hmm. We don't. We work very hard to help them be successful, but they have to have a willingness to partner with us and yes. an ability to pay and a need for for housing. Uh, a lot of times, people will be living someplace that's not a bad location. It's not bad. Uh, but they don't have a real need for housing, so that's one of the things we do visit their current housing and determine, right. in fact, are they are they really qualified? Mm -hmm. And those people that watched Extreme Makeover saw the kinds of conditions that uh, the oh, Wilson yeah. family was living in, and that's the kind of thing that we're trying to work to the eliminate. The Wilson family was a family that would have been accepted right. as having right. the need, right. clearly the need. Exactly, and that would give you a good example of what right. the need was like. There is a lot of families like that. In Horry County has a tremendous need for housing here, affordable housing. And when we talk about affordable housing, you know, the, the counties and cities talk about affordable housing in the real estate market, but they're talking about houses that are available for somewhere right. between $150,000 right. and $200,000. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, we sell our houses for $69,000 and $74,000. Mm -hmm. So for us, the difference between that being affordable 
and one hundred fifty or one hundred eighty thousand dollars is quite large gap. Mm -hmm. we but had, our gift is the no interest. Yeah, we had two ladies in recently from the Health Reach van that Conway Medical Center uh, does. It was fascinating. Janie Smith and Liz Bright who go out with the Backpack Buddies program mm -hmm. uh, for one school. I can't remember the name of the school. Palmetto Bays, I believe and providing food uh, to children uh, for the weekends, to have some food over the weekends, where truly they're getting their only meals there at school. At school mm -hmm. And there's just not the ability. So clearly, if there's that much need in a single school in the county for food over the weekend, then, then the uh, surroundings, the housing situation there uh, throughout the county must be much graver than could even be covered if Habitat for Humanity was flowing with money. Well, when you talk about um housing you know we we do more than housing right. and we okay, talk about good. building yeah. community and that um, you know anybody can build a house and you know as maybe not you if you don't do that kind I of can't thing. build you a can't house. build a house I will admit but I I'm saying that any deal. qualified yeah. building or construction person can build right. a house right. but what we're interested in is what happens before and after families are in homes and that once they're in a home they're part of a community, they are part of the tax base, they pay taxes on their houses, they take care of their houses, they become part of a community. Right. And that now, instead of children not having a place to sleep or their own bedroom or a place to do their homework, they, we see a lot of improvements in those oh, types yeah. of, um, they're, they're a little bit more subjective mm -hmm. right. things. It's, it's hard to measure. Is it, are the kids doing well? You can measure if the kids are doing better in school before and after moving oh, yeah. into a home, mm -hmm. habitat home. But it, some of it is subjective. We know it. We know it improves families' lives. Right. Not all the homes that you all have done since 1991, the 75 plus homes that you all have done, and maybe you can give me the exact number. I pulled that off the website. Have been in the the village of dreams here. They've been spread all over. How new or? What's the status of the village? Is it 30 to 35 acres? The uh... No, actually, it's only a seven and a half acre parcel that we started with. Okay. And we put 15 okay. homes on that. And then this parcel is another two or three ac two acres, I guess. Okay. Le no, it's actually less than an acre. It's an acre and about a quarter. I was thinking about quarters. some of the needs if folks could donate. One of them was mm -hmm. donating a plot of land. Land, absolutely. Potentially 30 oh. to 35 acre plot of land. But there land. are a number of great land things. Land would though. be wonderful. But, but even one parcel right. is fine. Right. So if, you know, if people have a parcel that they decided they couldn't use or wasn't suitable for what they had in mind, one parcel's great. We sometimes have people give us a parcel. Sure. Um, we're looking at, we're always looking for property, and that's part of my development piece and my Good. land acquisition yeah. part of what I do. And I'll be spending even more time on that because mm. we're, we'll be out of property nearly by the end of 2008. We'll probably be able to build a little bit in 2009 if we don't have some kind of parcel that we can start to develop and, and build houses on. And the benefits for <laughs> landowners there, there's a potential good tax uh, deduction yes. there. Yes. You all are obviously yes. 501c3 a corporation. They can donate the total cost. Um, sometimes we can work out a deal where they can donate part of it and we can pay cash for part of it. And uh, we, have, we can have people who would just like to adopt a lot right. where they might give ten thousand dollars for us to put it toward purchasing property mm -hmm. and that would really be helpful uh, we tremendous. actually just had one that was um, actually probably one of our first ones where a person in the community donated ten thousand dollars at Christmas time in honor of one of the people that he does business with mm. and it's going to go for a lot to That's adopt wonderful. a lot so there are lots of opportunities uh, for people uh, cash in kind services um, your time, you know, volunteer time, lots of different things that can be done. Very important. And the website lays out some great things. How can a viewer help right now if someone uh, couldn't go online? Some of the things, of course, it highlighted praying, mm -hmm. volunteering, requesting a speaking engagement, Absolutely. getting you in to come mm -hmm. speak to their church, to their, uh, service, to their club. Uh, uh, service club, to their religious establishment, whatever they that is. They can also donate to the resale store. Mm-hmm. Donating do, time, donating up, product. Well, we do pick up, so it can be new product or it can be gently used merchandise. You know, say you got a new sofa or a new chair, and your chair is still serviceable, and somebody else might be able to use it. Mm -hmm. Instead of throwing it away, you can donate that. 
to offices to that are moving from one absolutely. location to another. They're buying new furniture. You all, if they took yes. good care of their previous furniture. We just got a, a large amount of furniture from a bank that um, recently changed over. Right. Right. Or didn't need all of the furniture that they right. had. Right. I saw establishing a, a foundation was an idea mm -hmm. on your website to get mm -hmm. uh, to help to really help out. But there's so many ways. Ha uh, HabitatMB.org's got tremendous information. When you go here, it's page after page of more items. There's also lots of different types of volunteers. Different types of mm -hmm. volunteers. What are some examples, Gail? We got about five minutes of some different ways. And and what would be the requirements of any of our viewers if you needed volunteers? Or there's some special things they need to have or could you use people in the office to help on filing, mm -hmm. making phone calls? Um, do you need to have certain uh, mobility uh, um, issues? I mean, do they have to be mobile to be able to mm -hmm. come volunteer for Habitat for Humanity? We have had, uh, we use volunteers in our office every, every morning Good. and for special mailings that we do, we use a, a slew of volunteers Good. to do that because we, we have a mailing list of about 10,000. So by the time you put all that together, it mm -hmm. takes a little bit of time to yeah. do that. Sometimes we have special projects that they might be able to help with that are office related. We have an elevator in the building, so if right. people um, need handicapped accessible uh, facility, we can provide that. Mm -hmm. People can help in the store, uh, volunteer in the store, also on the construction site. Most of the people that, that want to volunteer initially want to volunteer on the construction site. Mm. That's probably the most popular site. Right. And we're getting ready to start two houses, one in Myrtle Beach uh, on what we call the Crayola community because it's a piece of property that's bordered by orange, gray, and crimson streets. And we're <laughs> building ten houses there. Ten and we homes have there. Wow. And three completed, and this will be the fourth one that we do. Uh, the First United Methodist Church of Myrtle Beach is the sponsor. Um, we have well, had, you're a member. Right. Exactly. Right. We have had a Catholic house that was just finished. Right. All the Catholic churches in the community built uh, that one. First Presbyterian Church of Myrtle Beach um, did one of the houses there. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then we're starting a house in Conway in the Turtle Creek subdivision. And the Baptist churches are going to be working on that, as well as we're using the money that we raised from our $100 house campaign. Oh, yeah. So Absolutely. We, and Very it's, important that, that's to our highlight. 82nd house mm -hmm. that's, that we're building in Conway. So. Th We've got um, people who want to volunteer on that house who gave money, and it's going, so it's going to be built by several of Jamestown, Jamestown Baptist Church and First Baptist in Conway, right. plus probably some others that we'll pick up along the way, and it will be the 82nd house. So. Folks want to know how their $100 donation can turn into a Habitat house. Exactly, and you know we, we raised all, um, over half of the cost of the house, which is $56,000. Yes. So that, was, that was excellent. A great response from the community. Where will the six homes be built? The five builders are doing in the five days. Uh, hopefully, seven homes as well. Will they all be contiguous to each other? They will be. They will. Good. They so will you're be. out there, obviously. Village all, of Dreams yeah. will be the location just off of Dick Scobie Road and Ron McNair Boulevard, off 501. Mm -hmm. Very important. Easy to find, and easy, for folks easy who to want find. to volunteer. They sure want to get in touch with you ahead of time to make sure. I'm sure you probably have, as you said, since a lot of folks want to be there on the site, there's probably instances where there's even too many people. Well, one of the things about the builder's blitz is right. that we do not, we're not using volunteers to build during the blitz. Mm -hmm. They will be providing support services. Okay, sure. Helping with meals, helping um, visitors, you know, kind of doing some support services, mm -hmm. uh, moving people from. Uh, parking places into the site so that they can see because traffic uh, and cars will be a problem on the site. And it is already a community, so we've got children in the Village of Dreams right. already and the 15 homes that are there. We don't want people speeding through there and bunches of, mm -hmm. you know, so we're going to try to keep the traffic down a little bit. You know, you have to stay active with the families both mm -hmm. during, uh, before, during, yeah. and after and yeah. maintain good family support, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that we say at Habitat is that once you're a Habitat family, you're always a Habitat family. Right. First right. of all, we hold the mortgage for the home, and so families are coming to pay us their mortgage payments. Monthly. And we, we care about whether they've lost their job or whether they have medical issues or whether their kids are having trouble or whatever, and we, so we spend quite a bit of time trying to do some of that right. um, support what we can help them find the resources we don't right. want to do things for the families and that's that whole hand up mm -hmm. hand out kind of right. 
thing. A hand up, not I mean, a hand up. One of the big things I think that makes habitat so valuable in the community is that we don't we don't give things away, and people like that. They like to know that the families actually do something to earn what they're getting, and and so we try to help them become independent. We don't want them to be dependent on us, but we want them to be able to be part of the community, be on their own. And um, I heard a person from Harvard say at a conference, he said, what Habitat does is we don't provide safety nets, but we provide trampolines so that people mm -hmm. can spring out of poverty into the middle class by home ownership. And I think that that's a visual that people can see and understand. Yes, those are great words. I'm glad you heard that and shared yeah. it with us. Gail, thanks Thank so much you. for being You're with welcome. us this morning. I'm sorry we've run out of time. Thank you. Absolutely. You know I can talk forever. No, you did very well. We'll get you back another time. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with the Executive Director of the Habitat for Humanity of Horry County, Gail Oliver, coming up next. We ran out of time. She had to share that great idea off camera, that, that aspect of a handout is often perceived as a safety net. Can you see the hand up, the trampoline analogy she was giving it? Isn't that a great one, the hand up? A hand up, not a handout. 916-8815-843-916-8815 or habitatmb.org. Building, I love those lines, building homes in partnership with God's people in need. Building homes in partnership with God's people in need. Take the time to go online or pick up the phone. 916-8815, Gail Olive.